Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and today I'm going to teach you some tips and tricks on inking. We're going to be using Photoshop for this and enjoy the video. Alright, so we're in our, on our application and as you can see here, I have my pencils set up, lined up, just the way I want them. And as I said prior to the other videos, I love using layers. I feel like it's the best way to show off your work, minimize mistakes. So I'm going to go in here, select the second layer, and call that inks, which are going to be my inks. So I for my inks exactly, because my pencils are always a different color, for personal reasons, one being that I like the pencils to be very light when I do my inking, if I can tell the difference. So there's a little folder here by the brushes using Photoshop. I will go on it. It's called brush settings select my brush tool and I have my brush set up at a, at a hardness at a, of 100% and the spacing I minimize it at 1% some default brushes here they'll have it at for example the hard round brush the default will have we'll have it at 5% the reason why I put you should put it at 1% is due to the fact that it minimizes the pixelation when you're getting in there and when you're posting your art you also get this really nice, tight, sharp lines that helps out when you're cross-hatching digitally. So as I said before, I get in brush, I select color black, I lower the smoothing a bit because I like to feel it more natural, and I increase my brush size. So this is a drawing of my superhero, the Alpha. His two books are currently out right now on Amazon, the Alpha issue one and the Alpha issue two. Links will be in my bio. And this is just a quick concept art of issue three. Now this scene exactly isn't in the book, but for the purpose of this video, I sketch a little scene of Alpha in the alleyway with some one point perspective there. And I'm teach you some, some of my habits that I use and some tips and tricks that makes you ink faster or make the process at least a little bit more, more, more smoother. So as I said before, I like changing the brush settings and making the hardness at 100% and as well as the spacing at 1% because you create these really nice diagonal lines. And I draw slanted. Some people draw different, but my style of drawing is always right to left. It's the same way I write as well, and it's just a nice way to stay comfortable, stay loose while you're drawing. So I do recommend if you're using Photoshop, if you're using Clip Studios, it also works on Procreate. Change the brush settings, play around with it, try different lines. I, every time I draw or when I color, I always do some catching to the side of it to see if I like the brush or not. Test it out. You never know you, what you'll be missing out. <laughs> and I promise you, if it's something you like, not only will it make your drawing digitally e a lot easier, but you'll end up loving it more. So, Alpha has a few strokes of hair there. Get some hair coming down here. And we're getting to the mask. So as I said before, this is going to be a quick rundown guide on how I draw, not draw, ink my drawings digitally. And it's almost the same as if you were drawing traditionally or inking traditionally. I use the same methods, same techniques, like cross hatching or filling out your blacks or your darks. It just makes the process of coloring a lot easier. I purposely like leave some intentional gaps there. Some negative space as we say. Kinda to make your eye fill out the gap. Uh, he has in his mask, he has these two stripes coming down. I'll zoom out a bit. Sometimes I just like zooming out from the camera a bit just to see the whole drawing. But 
But yeah, uh, the Alpha is my superhero. Currently have two issues out right now, and he's just a genetically enhanced superhuman with the power of a demigod. And his physical strengths include that he's invulnerable to most things, even bullets. He has super speed, super strength. He has like kind of like this daredevil sense where he can tell something from across a block or something or five blocks. He has enhanced fighting skills. And he heals fast. Not like a Wolverine healing factor, not on the spot, but he can heal like in a few hours or in a few days. But with that, he has some weaknesses. There's a rare type of metal in my comic book. Once you read it, this is the only type of weakness. It's a cosmic metal coming from an asteroid. It's kind of like my version of adamantium if in my book. And it's the only metal dense enough to pierce his skin and it leaves some marks so he actually gets some scars from it leaving a realistic factor into the book this is a superhero that I created since I was about 15 years old and yeah pretty much the design stayed the same the only prior difference is I added a bottom portion of the mask which will be in issue 3 Issue 1 and 2 have kind of like this traditional look with just a domino mask and just uh, like almost like a vigilante suit. This one is more armor based with some nanotech involved into it as well as his superpowers. So he's getting the whole package over here. Another cool thing about the Alpha, you probably haven't known as I'm plugging my book, is that his He's a, what I call a limit breaker. So his powers are always tested in each issue. And every time that he's beaten, kind of like how the Saiyans are in Dragon Ball Z, he gradually just, just gets stronger and gets new skills and gets new powers. So each issue, he's stronger than the next issue, which gives me the opportunity to just bring a better villain, a stronger villain. As of right now, He's still struggling with one villain, Phantom, which is part of the prototype arc of my, tri my trilogy issues for the Alpha. But you'll see new villains eventually. So as you see with my pencils as well, they're also very loose. Only if I can go into with my ink tool and just cover it all up. That's why I love working with layers as I said earlier get a ton of space to try to cover up those mistakes or even prevent those mistakes those little mistakes that when they are collected as a whole can really do some damage to your drawings so I'm just doing some quick hatching on the sides I'm trying to show the shape of these shoulder pads He has kind of like this armband, like on the upper arm by the bicep area as well. I'm going to do some little bit of hatching just to three dimensionalize the drawing. as I said before now you can kind of see why I like choosing like a light blue personally or you can choose any color but I personally like using light blue when I ink digitally because you can kind of tell what part you use or not because when you start bringing these when you start using hatches or other things etc like the, if it was black the colors may look the same and it can get really confusing so just to avoid those confusions, I just like switching up the color. Because at the end, only the black part is going to show. So I go in and out. 
tool. I keep creating these hatches just to give them some grit. Just like that. Here comes the gloves. It also makes my job a lot easier when I color. Because you can already kind of tell where the shadows are building up into the drawings. So which areas involve more darker colors and which area involves more lighter colors. Phrase I use very often these days, rendering. So I'm adding more blacks here and there. Oops. And add some lines into these suits right here, coming off the side of the mask. Kind of like where he'll breathe, where the air will come out, will flow out. I get this question a lot on Instagram. They're like, how do you draw your anatomy so good? Practice, practice a lot. And I also give the quick tip. Don't draw so stiff, just draw better. Just stay loose. Don't take it so serious each drawing. Cause you can always just go back to it. Here's a quick tip. I like using the lasso tool. On Photoshop, which is the third one down by the toolbar. I'll select my little area. You can make any shape. Circle it around. And I just color it in. Command S and then you command D or Control D if you are using PCs. Are my PC users out there. always good it's a good habit to just zoom out from your drawing give it a look see if there's anything you don't like maybe need a little more black there and possibly a little more cross hatching 
So I'll load my brush tool. create these darker, more harsher lines, but can just blend in with the blacks. So it's good to just blend in your drawings because this will be grays and these are your blacks. Copy the same thing we did for this hand, and we do it on this side. So I'm going my brush size, start hatching, and I come across. Let's create a little bit of details here, just to create some like some dirt, some damage onto the suit. so maybe I'll add a little bit of grace. That area will be like a darker shade of red when colored. Superheroes have abs. Well, not all, most. But now do I do the same. This will be where I can the rib cage when so you make that line a little darker. side of the head, the side of the head are not coming off the neckline, so what I will do is I can create a darker line, I can create a shadow. Same thing here, I can come across it. Tool one more time. Come in. I like doing these spikes at the end of it, it just gives up this cool effect. Now I can also fill that up right away by going to edit, fill. It's on my other screen, but the screen will, that will come out with black. And I'll fill it up from there. And always control D or command D. are very important in comic books because they can be they can be very expressive. <laughs> We're coming here to the 
other side of the arm. Now, if you're interested in making your own indie comic book, this has been the new norm. There is a podcast that I'm in right now, the Indie Alliance, the Bleeding, Dying, Dead podcast by the Indie Alliance at Indie Alliance on Instagram and on YouTube as well. The links will be down below. And we talk about how to about your IPs, publishing tips on comic book writing, the art, how to start your own Kickstarter, or where to sell your comic books, or in a recent episode, graphic novels versus comic books, which one you should start in. It's just a bunch of guys trying to give all our honest tips, but you don't have to, so you can avoid as many mistakes as possible, because mistakes are going to happen. But you avoid the ones, for example, I've made. They were pretty dumb mistakes. Just looking out for everyone out there. And yeah, and there's um, there's over 40 creators that we have. 49 probably t by today. It may go up, but that's the day of the recording. It's 49 right now. And yeah. We have over 49 creators all over the world and we all just kind of made our own version of the Justice League <laughs> we all just help each other out give each other ideas as creators nobody owns no one's IPs because we're not a publisher we're just like a, a super team so everyone at the end of the day is their own boss Come check us out. We're on Instagram. We're also on YouTube. The links will be down below. You can also check out my Instagram at Sketchpad by JM, where I release a lot of my art and you know, most of my updates for my comic book. He's coming off the page very well. Maybe not this hand area, so I'm about to go back in there and fix that little area right there. So, like I said earlier, you always get in the habit of just zooming out, or if you're drawing on a paper, just take a step back and just look at your project as a whole. Because you never know. The mistakes you might not see when you're so into the project. Coming from experience, that always used to happen to me. Still does to this day. are red but I like using some hatching so just to put some line work into it as you can see my style it's very Todd McFarlane inspired Mark Silvestri so 
very 90s. A lot of line work. Some people can just get away with very few. I'm not that guy. I feel like when I have very few, something's missing. But I have seen some masterpieces with like half my line work. They make my drawings look like circles in front of theirs. So I get my, my lasso tool and I'm gonna fill out some blacks. I'm just carving out a shape. And I will fill that black. Edit, fill, and a stroke. Oops. Cancel. So edit, fill, come back to it, fill it black. And always come in. And then I usually go back with my brush tool because sometimes it won't get everything. And I'll just come back and I just edit some lines up. Make some area more pointed than others. And then I usually start cross hatching a bit just to add some grays into the black, and blend it all in. If you guys are using Photoshop or Clip Studio, you should definitely try out that lasso tool. It'll save you a ton of time when trying to ink out your blacks. Especially if many people are on due dates for creating the comic books. It can save you a ton of time. It also works for color as well. We'll take a step back and take a look. It was looking pretty good. We'll come in there again. Some more line work. Everything's coming down from the knees. Some people ask me as well on Instagram, they're like, oh man, Joel, how you make your characters seem like so real? Uh, like They look like they're actually getting affected by gravity. And here's the trick, I'll just make a new layer. Always draw your character. Instead of drawing your legs straight down, draw them more like an S. Because the weight of gravity is pushing down, as you can see. Where the gravity is pushing down through here, and it's coming through here and here. It creates more of an illusion that the legs are coming in together, as you can see here. There's weight coming from here, from the front, and from the side. So I'll just uh, time lapse it for you guys, and then you guys will see the end result. Stay tuned. 